Hi, everybody. This is Dave Vellante of Wikibon.org, and we're back with Pat Gelsinger. Pat, welcome again. Thanks for taking some time with us. Hey, it's always my pleasure, Dave. Thanks yeah, so much. Good to see you. We're here. We're going to talk about Flash. Now, we got together last year at EMC World. You were really gracious with your time. You probably spent a, close to an hour with John and myself. And, it was uh, fun. That was good. And one of the areas we talked about was, was what was known at the time as Project Lightning. And, yeah, uh, yeah, I told you we were going to do it. Yeah, you showed a little leg at the time yeah. and uh, <laughs> gave us a glimpse, and now we're here, and it's, uh, it's come to fruition. It's called, called VF Cash, mm -hmm. right? But so mm -hmm. before we get into that, uh, maybe you can help our audience understand what's happening with Flash in general. One of the things that, that we've written about a lot at Wikibon is how server function migrated out of the host, you know, for the last 20 years. Of course, EMC had a big role in making that happen. Sure. Because you watched it from the other perspective at Intel, mm -hmm. and now it, it seems like function is starting to move back. Um, is that an accurate assessment, and what does that mean for the whole flash trend? Well, we do think that, uh, you know, th that there's a couple of big trends. You know, one is the whole idea of this virtualized data center, where in fact you're creating more flexibility of what happens on the infrastructure, where we can start moving stuff around. We also see that there's this huge I.O. gap that's emerged, right, where, boy, you know, if there was only a little bit uh, faster CPU versus what you could get from a disk drive right over the network, didn't matter a lot. Now that gap has become enormous. So there's this huge tension that says, drive down latency, give me better performance, right, and all of a sudden the question is, can I use, right, new technologies like Flash in innovative ways to close that gap? And that's what, you know, VF Cache and Lightning is all about. Yeah, so, I mean, the point being the disks actually are so slow relative to yeah. things like Flash and, and Yeah, it's just and, incredible, and you know. You know, and Moore's law just keeps trumping along, you know, at this incredible pace, so compute keeps accelerating. But while density has improved, guess what? Right, access times haven't changed hardly for a decade. So do you see the, you know, uh, it's always been cost per bit, cost per gigabyte is the primary metric that customers use to evaluate storage. Mm -hmm. Do you see that changing to things like cost per I.O.? Well, you, always there has been a cost per I.O. question, right? You know, you go to databases, people have always, and you know, whether we're short stroking drives or other things, right, to give us more, right, I.O.s per whatever uh, metric. And, but there have always been the cost per gigabyte questions as well, because, you know, the data deluge continues to outpace Moore's Law, continues to outpace uh, aerial density improvements. So we know that cost per gigabyte matters, but we also know that cost per I.O. or raw latency matters as well. And it's really the question of how do you do both? And that's what you know, EMC is all about. So we're going to get into VF Cache in a minute, but I, and I see it as, as, as much software as it is hardware. Can you talk about that a little bit? Yeah, the value that EMC is bringing to this is software, services, and support. Right, you know, well, that's what we are bringing, and we're combining that with a multi-vendor hardware environment where we'll pick the best in the industry. Our lead partner is Micron with uh, VF Cache, but our value is very much the software layer that we're putting on top of best-in-class hardware underneath it. Yeah, and let's talk about that a little bit. I mean, specifically, we're talking about you managing the entire hierarchy from server flash all the way down to spinning disk. It seems like it's getting more granular. Um, talk a little bit about that extension of that hierarchy and EMC's role and vision. Yeah, that. yeah and that, that really is the heart of why our position here is differentiated. You know, if we back up a little bit, when we first put Flash into our storage arrays, everybody says, hey, that's pretty cool, but now I got to provision yet another kind of disk drive, essentially. And then we says, oh, let's do fast, this automated storage tiering. So we can move it from SATA, right, to fiber up to SSD. And that was pretty cool. And the ability to move up and down that hierarchy, right, has been highly successful uh, in the industry. And, you know, we did uh, 25 petabytes last year, right, of flash shipments, largely based on that technology. But now the question is, can you go all the way, all the way to the server? And that's exactly what VF Cache is about, is extending that fast hierarchy, not just in the storage array, but all the way to the server as well. And being able to have intelligence, right, from the server storage, right, all the way into the array storage, all the way into the most cost-effective storage available on the planet. So do you think all active data will eventually land on Flash? All performant data will end on Flash. Right, everything that needs performance goes to Flash, and everything else will end up in the lowest cost tier possible. And it really does become this increasing bifurcation, right, of the storage model. Right, you know, in the future there won't be fiber channel, right, in terms of fiber channel drives, because performant drives end on Flash, you know, not which means everything else is colder, right, which will end up on the most cost-effective SAS or SATA available. 
So let's talk about that a little bit because you've got obviously a lot of data on Symmetrics. It's the high performance, high availability system. It's you know, running the world's banks and insurance companies and all kinds of other you know, retail operations, et cetera. Um, what happens to that layer of the storage hierarchy? Does that move into, into Flash? Uh, that, that function, or uh, what kind of what kind of trends do you expect there? Yeah, well, what we'd expect is, you know, if you looked at Symmetrics past, it was almost all fiber channel drives, right? If you look at Symmetrics forward, right, it will be a combination of SaaS and SATA drives for lower cost, right, of solid state within the array, right, for performance within the array, and then intelligence to the server tier or to the VF cache tier. And that will all be managed by VMAX in the future, right? Those three tiers of storage, the most cost effective uh, spinning media, right? You know, flash within the array and flash in the server, all managed through VMAX through a consistent set of fast policies. So EMC's vision in VMAX, and I presume VNX as well, could exactly. be that single point of control that's actually managed the, managing the entire hierarchy, ensuring data availability, data consistency, and, and performance, and matching the right data with the device characteristics? Yeah, and that's really the magic of uh, VF Cache, right? It's not just some other island, right, that's not managed, that's not coherent, not persistent, sitting somewhere else in the data center. It's just another you know, piece of that whole storage hierarchy, all managed, all serviced, all being uh, delivered through this consistent set of policies up and down the hierarchy. And from a user's perspective, it's all persistent, it's all HA, it's you know, all of those characteristics that they know and love about our storage, they haven't given anything up. From the IT's perspective, oh, I know how to manage, I know how to service, I know how EMC supports this kind of stuff. You know, it is mission critical from his perspective. Right, and from the end user's perspective, it's performance at lower cost, right? Everybody wins in this question. So let's talk about VF Cache in a little bit more detail. So why VF Cache and, and why now? Well, you know, we've been uh, working on the idea for the last uh, you know, year and a half or so, this idea of how can we deliver right, flash in new ways in the industry. Obviously step one was just SSDs and RRAs. Second was fast, right, and delivering this automated tiering, but customers want more. This I.O. gap continues to expand, right, and this multi-core x86, I did a few of those in my career, right, you know, you know, has just continued unabated Right, that I.O. gap has continued to increase. And so the ability to put a flash tier, right, a caching tier with flash into the server just gives another couple of orders of magnitude improvement in many use cases that just is so valuable to customers who are out for performance and out for a reduction in latency that you know, now's the time. So I wonder if we could talk a little bit about um, some of the choices that your customers make. Uh, EMC landed a haymaker was how we described it when Inside of the array, you included enterprise flash drives. Nobody really expected it. Um, mm -hmm. It was an amazing announcement because it really woke everybody up as to the, hey, flash is here and it's now. And then EMC really shot ahead in the mind share of the audience. And it was you know, really a, a great innovation. Over the next several years, we, we've seen other innovations from startups, uh, maybe from some of the systems companies, people putting uh, flash very close to the, to the CPU. How do you differentiate from all those other activities going on out there? Yeah, you know, we think of every other one of those as you know taking this new technology and working an innovation around it, and that's exciting, right? You know, it's just a you know a thrilling period of the industry where a major new technology emerges and lots of innovation, right, is enabled as a result of it. But when you go to an enterprise customer, they say, "Boy, do I want another island to manage? Do I want to only have this right? You know, being used by a couple of apps, right? You know, because it's not persistent, right? Do I want it you know closer to the server or do I want it in the server?" Right? Right? And you know all those forced trade-offs on the part of a CIO or IT. I can use it in some apps. I can't use it here. Right? You know, to us, you know, VF Cache is saying, you know, we're going to give you all of those value propositions without trade-offs. Right? It will be EMC support. It will be enterprise grade. Right? It will fit into the storage hierarchy. That's HA. That's business continuity. That's service and support as you have it. No trade-offs with the maximum performance of any product in this class in the industry. This just wins because it's a better product. Yeah, so what do you see as Intel's role in all of this? I know they're a good partner, you obviously know the company very well. Where do they fit? Well, you know, I mean, Intel deserves enormous credit, right, you know, for, right, the basic innovations that have occurred, even going all the way back to EEPROM and Flash. I mean, they have been, a, you know, a core technology innovator in this space for many, many years. 
part of the magic of VF Cache is being able to take PCI Gen 3, right, the next generation, right, of the I.O. bus that Intel has enabled, right, and really, really being able to take advantage of that performance and latency inside of the uh, server. And Intel's doing great work, right, not just with their own Flash products, but more importantly from our perspective in the platforms themselves, right. And so, you know, they remain a key partner for us in many, many uh, respects, and we think they're going to be enabling more and more use cases for how Flash gets utilized in the server as we go forward. Do you think observers should expect that, that Intel is going to play a role in Eliminating, you know, no offense to EMC, but that horrible storage stack, you know, that's all built around, uh, you know, spinning disk and then directly access the flash as a memory extension. Do you, do you see Intel as playing that role? Do you see EMC as playing that role, or is it just too early to tell? Well, you know, we don't we we don't see first right, and a very important point, right, because of the comments I made earlier, David, right, that you know the cost per bit of flash never approaches the cost per bit in an aerial hard disk drive right kind of comparison. So hard disk drives don't go away in our lifetime because we have way too much data to store, right, and the cost delta right between flash and spinning media just never close. Right? We don't see that for decades to come. So, you know, it's not a question of one versus the other, but how do you effectively do both? Right, and when you go to the server side, right, it's all about access and performance, so flash will be the dominant storage mechanism on the server side. And when you go on the array side, it's how do you take advantage of both, right, with hard disk drives always having the mass of data on the array side just by the sheer volume and cost per bit uh, comparison. So it's not either or, it's and. Okay, and with VF Cache now, you, however, you are playing on the server side. Absolutely. So my question is, are you now a systems company? Well, you, you know, we view it as extending the storage array, right? You know, we're extending our core capacity of being the storage and the, you know, at the other end of the wire and extending it into the server. I'm not in the server business, right? But I clearly am taking our value proposition, much like we've done with HBAs for decades or, you know, we've done with, uh, you know, our uh, different uh, software technologies on the uh, server side. Well, guess what? We now have a hardware product on the server side as well, right, mm -hmm. called VF Cache. Well, now, of course, your your colleague, Paul Moritz, is in the server business, software server, I guess. Yeah. So, mm -hmm. um, so it, w what's the VMware play here? Talk about that a little bit. Well, you know, for VMware, right, you know, one of the usage models that VF Cache supports is the virtualized environment. That's very important. And we're working with VMware to make Flash a better citizen in virtualized environments, to have better support inside of the uh, virtualized, uh, you know, the vSphere offerings, so that, you know, the Flash capabilities, which are, right, a different model of I.O. characteristics, can be better supported and utilized by you know, ESX as well as by the hosts that they're running in those environments. Yeah, so now, of course, EMC had yet, yet another, you know, tremendous quarter just announced uh, this month, throwing off tons of cash. Uh, all products really seem to be firing, you know, revenue growth higher than the industry average, which is great, congratulations on that. Thank you. Um, you're painting a picture where essentially VF Cash and Flash is largely incremental to your existing franchise, if I'm, if I'm understanding that. Can you elaborate on that a little bit and, and talk about when you really see uh, this part of the portfolio really providing a meaningful contribution. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we really, our, our positioning of the product, how we're selling it to customers is, and it, it's an extension of your arrays. Right, and yeah, you can go use it without having our arrays on the other end, but boy, you know, from our sales guy's perspective, our customer's perspective, it makes VMAX and VNX just better, right? We're going to use those same management, the same support, the call home mechanisms, right, are all an extension of what they're already familiar with, and that really gives us a great advantage. We're also going to extend the fast APIs, right, and the hinting mechanisms through the server layer into the storage array, so the product is better as well when it's connected, right, with our storage uh, arrays. So it really is an extension, make them better, right? And we're finding customers already saying, boy, you know, if I have that, you know, a com combination of VMAX with this or a VNX with uh, VF Cache, wow, that's a killer solution. In fact, I'm not going to consider some of those alternative architectures, right, like a, a Exadata or something else. They're going to say, you know, boy, that combination is really fabulous to go with it. We do expect, right, you know, that will be a meaningful product line for us, right, but, you know, clearly, you know, this is the, this is day one. I don't, I don't want to get too far ahead of myself of the uh, next blockbuster product. Okay, and, and you're talking about um, a very st strong relationship between <clears throat> the storage array and the, the, the flash hierarchy. My question is around, uh, and you know me, Pat, I mean, I just, you, I'm, I'm firing on all kinds of different synapses when I hear you speak, <laughs> and, and I'm interested in how 
you organized uh, this project because you came to market pretty fast. Mm -hmm. You said you, you started relatively recently for an innovation like this, um, yet it has a skunk works feel to it. Yeah, um, yeah. Was it a skunk works and how, how did you manage the human capital mm -hmm. of the innovation? Mm -hmm. Yeah, and we very much, uh, to, to a great degree, you know, this was an eternal startup. Right and right, you know the uh, manager right uh, of the team. I remember one time, uh, you know, I said, "You are a startup, right? Think about this like a venture team. You want the best architects, you want the best people, you want you know, you know, bodaciously aggressive goals for the team, and you know, just drive them just like a startup would, right? Internally." And I remember he was, you know, came into a meeting one day, right, and uh, you know, I just ripped ripped them apart. I says, "Why are you in this meeting?" Right, I says, this is you know, your standard big company kind of stuff. Why are you here? Right, you know, that's not how a startup works. Right? You don't get distracted with this rest of the corporate stuff right, that's going on. Get out of here and get back to driving your team hard. And uh, you know, it, was a, it was a little event, but it just helped to reinforce the message. Right? You know, we have to be nimble. We have to do or in internal organic innovation as well as the great track record and EMC has had in terms of uh, acquisitions as well. So that th this has been thrilling that way. And now that it's launched, will you actually you know, nurture it as you might? It, it, will will those, some of those startup uh, characteristics continue, or do you sort of just bundle it back into the? Oh no! Of business? Yeah, this is uh, this is uh, at least a couple of years yet that this is going to feel like an eternal startup because you know we got a Gen two, just like any startup man. We have a Gen two roadmap and a Gen three roadmap. You know, we are, you know just driving that team for the second and third versions, right? We're also going to talk about a new project that's coming out of this team as well as part of the launch, right? You know, what follows lightning? Thunder. Right, so we have a Thunder project as well that we're going to disclose right as part of the announcement. So, uh, you know, another innovation coming out of this cool little startup team. So we're driving them hard. Fantastic. Do you want to talk a little bit more about Thunder? I mean, what, 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 what can we expect there? What can, what can you tell us about Thunder? Well, the idea of Thunder is that, uh, you know, imagine I have, you know, five servers, right, each with a lightning card in them, right? Some customers might say, boy, can't I share my flash across the five servers? Right? And instead of having it in each of the servers, just put it right next to the servers and make it like a little appliance. Now the reasons you would do that is you'd be able to share right, the, the flash footprint across multiple servers and some things like Oracle Rack right, really fit into that model. Right. Right? When you do that you could be persisting both or you, you could be caching both reads and writes as well as many customers have put in place high density blade environments that don't have slots to put in a lot of flash directly into the blade server, right? So they say, boy, I like the characteristics of Lightning, right? But I like it, right, so that I could utilize it with the installed footprints I have of blade servers. And in many cases, they don't want to go disrupt each server. They say, boy, you know, it's just easier for me to hook up, right, an appliance right next to my servers. So that's what Thunder is, right? It's essentially an aggregation of Lightnings into an appliance that, right, you know, will give a different value proposition, right, that, but building on all the Lightning technology we've created. Yeah, so cache coherency across multiple servers, the ability to, sh to share, and presumably to support a whole new type of application. Yeah, and uh, you know we see it in existing applications. They're going to be able, able to take advantage of it, but you know we think that people will see such enormous IOP capabilities coming out of this. They're going to say, "Oh, I could think about my application hierarchy different." Fun time to be a developer. Well, Pat Gelsinger, thanks very much for taking some time with us. Really, always appreciate your perspectives, and it's, Thank a, you, it's a pleasure seeing you. Very good. Thanks. Thanks for watching, everybody.